the place, London, the time, 1843, the season, that of jollity and festivity and charity, with perhaps one exception, and it is with this exception that we are concerned in our story. That exception is Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> a humbug, Uncle. You surely don't mean that. I do. I didn't my way every idiot who goes about the streets with Merry Christmas on their lips would be boiling in their own pudding. Uncle! You keep Christmas in your way and I'll keep it in mine. But you don't keep it. Good afternoon, Fred. Very well, Uncle. Dine with us tomorrow. Good afternoon! Goodbye. I suppose you want all day off tomorrow. It's only once a year, sir. That's a poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Very well. Be here all the earlier next morning. Yes, thank you, Mr. Scrooge. Hello, Governor. Scrooge and Marley's. Do we have the pleasure of talking to Scrooge and Marley? Mr. Marley died seven years ago this very evening. We're very sorry about your loss, sir. We're here to gather money for the poor this Christmas. Are there no prisons or workhouses? Plenty of those. Oh, by what you said, I thought something had stopped them in their useful cause. I do not marry myself at Christmas and cannot afford to marry others. Now I expect you to say that the poor would rather die. Well, I suggest they do that and decrease the surplus population. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon. Scrooge. No, no, I don't believe it. You know what you are? You're an undigested bit of beef, an undercooked potato. It's more of gravy than of grave in you. I were the chains I forged in life. Would you like to know the length and weight of the chains you bear, Scrooge? Speak comfort to me, Molly. I have come to warn you. You yet have a chance to avoid my fate. You will be visited by three spirits. I think I'd rather not. It is the only way to shun the path I tread. Humbug. Oh! <laughs>
You have changed. You fear the world too much. There's nothing harder than poverty, so I pursue wealth. Our contract is an old one, but when you made it, you are another man. I can release you. Have I ever sought release? In words, no. In what then? In a changed nature. I hope you are happy in the life you have chosen. No more. Show me no more. These are the things that have been. Do not blame me. Remove me. I cannot bear it. Aha. Uh -huh. So you're Ebenezer Scrooge. Well, come here and know me better, man. I am the ghost of Christmas present, and you have never seen the likes of me. <laughs> Spirit, conduct me where you will. Grasp my sleeve. Oh, the pudding, oh, the pudding. Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. Merry Christmas, and God bless us. God bless us, everyone. Tell me, Spirit, will Tiny Tim live? I see an empty chair and a crutch without an owner. If this goes unaltered, the boy will die. Toast to Mr. Shoemakers. I'll drink his health for your sake and for the days, but not for his. My time here is brief, and the bell soon tolls thrice. <laughs> Presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come? You are here to show me what hasn't happened and will happen in the time before us. What? What day is it? Day. Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. I will not stand for this any longer. That's why, that is why, I'm raising your salary. Oh, how wonderful. We will discuss it this very afternoon. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, sir. Scrooge was better than his word. And as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. <laughs>